Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Tuesday, July the 2nd, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's riff a bit on boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now you have two guys at 160 pounds, both unbeaten. Demetrius Andre and Jamal Charlo. And they want to fight Saul Alvarez, the box office king for the division. Right? I'm just telling you folks, they are chasing ghosts. Rumor has it that Canelo is thinking about fighting Sergei Kovalev for his title at 175 pounds. Right? I think it's an open question whether the 5'8 Saul Alvarez will ever fight at middleweight ever again. Right? It's possible he has better options. Understand, I think Andre in particular is a very tough fight for him. More importantly, I think he beats Kovalev at 175, right? The big question there is whether Canelo is prepared to take a light heavyweight's punch. I don't believe Canelo beats Bivol at 175. I do believe he beats Kovalev. Let's face it, Kovalev, especially under Buddy McGirt, relies heavily on his jab. We saw how Canelo can hide his upper body in the Danny Jacobs fight to dodge that jab. Right? Let's also keep in mind Kovalev's punch resistance is questionable as we saw in the first Elidor Alvarez fight where Kovalev hits the canvas several times and as we saw in the second Andre Ward fight. I get the feeling that Kovalev has a problem making weight at 175. I think the guy loses a lot of weight to make weight, and I think he loses a lot of punch resistance in the process, especially since he's well into his 30s. Understand, too, Andre Ward in the rematch against Kovalev went to Kovalev's body, took it away. You might recall Kovalev seen finished at the end of that fight, right? Understand, Saul Alvarez is a great body puncher. Just look at the Liam Smith fight, right? And of course, Canelo would be coming in from a low angle. Canelo can fight low, and Canelo is several inches shorter than Kovalev. So if Canelo can take Kovalev's punch, and understand, Canelo would be dodging the jab. I believe Kovalev's one of these guys who needs to touch you first with the jab before he lays out the right hand. I think Canelo would be able to avoid that jab. I think as Kovalev tries to come in on Canelo, I believe that Canelo would be able to work his body. Let's face it too. Kovalev doesn't quite have great balance. Wasn't he knocked down by Blake Caporello? Right? I get the feeling that if Saul Alvarez gets inside and is able to land some heavy body shots, I think he takes the ear out of Kovalev's tire. Understand, a Canelo victory over Kovalev would be historical. It would give Canelo more than Canelo would get from fighting Andre, fighting Charlo, fighting Golovkin a third time. Because it would give Canelo the title at 175. Canelo's already won world titles at 154, 160, and 168. So as you talk about Canelo, we would be saying, this guy cleaned up the titles from Super Welter all the way up to Light Heavy. Understand, as good as Andre is at 160, Andre can't give him that legacy. Also, the people at the zone would have a hard time arguing that Canelo isn't delivering value on his contract when he's fighting for titles. 
several weight classes above middle weight. Right? Understand too. There are those, let me raise my hand here, who believe that Golovkin beat him. In fact, who believe that Golovkin's never lost to him. Right? Understand, fighting Kovalev at 175 would give him an easy dodge of Golovkin. They would say, why aren't you fighting Gennady Golovkin? The response would be, because I have bigger fish to fry. Right? Golovkin himself might not be able to make 160. Understand, Golovkin's last fight was at a catch weight. Callum Smith, just look at the size, just look at the age. You understand that this guy's not going to fight at 160 forever. Right? I believe a move by Canelo to 175, if it happens, doesn't negate a Callum Smith fight, which could take place at 175. Understand, Callum Smith himself is flirting with the idea of fighting Kovalev. Right? The challenge Callum Smith has is that he simply cannot compete with Canelo's box office appeal. Let's also talk about Canelo for a second. You know, we think of Canelo as a small guy for 175, right? Hasn't he only fought once above 164? But dig a little bit deeper. Folks, it's 2019, right? 2019. Canelo, nine years ago, was the super welterweight champion. In other words, he weighed 154 pounds nine years ago in 2010. Right? So over the course of nine years, Canelo would be moving up 21 pounds in terms of fighting weight. Right? It's possible that 5'8 Canelo was just a thick man. He dominated at 168 against Rocky Fielding his punching power carried against Rocky Fielding. He takes Rocky Fielding out on body shots. In my opinion, Canelo might naturally be a light heavyweight. So pay close attention to the Canelo situation. It's going to impact a lot of people. Jamal Charlo, Demetrius Andre, Gennady Golovkin. You've heard me mention another name, Bivol. Understand, should Canelo annex the belt at light heavyweight, that's going to open the door to a whole host of new characters. Bivol, Grostick, etc. As well as the possibility of Callum Smith coming up to 175. In sum, Canelo holds a lot of cards. Right? He never, he never has to fight Demetrius Andre. As painful as that sounds to boxing fans, I question whether Canelo even returns to the middleweight division. Folks, he's been there. He's done that. Let me also say, too, things look different in the moment than they do years from now when you look back at them in the historical rearview mirror. Right now, there's outcry. We're saying, look, he has to fight Golovkin again. There's unfinished business. But just understand officially, regardless of what critics like me think, officially, Canelo got a draw against Golovkin, then Canelo got a win against Golovkin. If those are the only chapters 
in the head-to-head -head book concerning Canelo and Golovkin, Canelo is going to look good historically if he moves on and fights people in heavier weight classes like Kovalev. Understand too, boxing in terms of weights a bit fraudulent, right? We're here talking about the possibility of a third middleweight matchup between Golovkin and Canelo. Today, in 2019, is either guy really a middleweight? Why was Golovkin's last fight at a catch weight? If you're Canelo and you have a big payday against a champion who, let's face it, is a fading champion, understand, there's a reason why Kovalev felt it necessary to hire a new trainer in Buddy McGirt. Right? There's a reason why Kovalev looked terrible in that first Alvarez fight. Forget the Andre Ward fight, the rematch where he looked terrible. Let's remember there's a fight after that where Kovalev looked terrible. As I've said, there's one unbeaten in boxing over the generations, and that's Father Time. Right? Kovalev is now well into his 30s. Right? He's in his mid-30s. So understand, Canelo has a unique opportunity here. It's unique. He has the kind of box office pull where champions and other weights have to pay attention when there's the possibility of fighting him. Right? He's a puncher. The big secret to Canelo is he's one of the biggest punchers pound for pound in boxing. We know his punch carried to 168. Understand, Callum Smith could offer him a title at 168. But will that be more prestigious legacy-wise 10 years from now than an attempt by Canelo on the light heavyweight title one floor up? When we talk about guys like Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, Mikey Garcia, don't we always talk about the number of titles in different weight classes that these guys have? Right? Doesn't the Manny Pacquiao discussion start by us saying, oh, Pacquiao won titles in this many weight classes? If Canelo is looking at legacy, if he's looking at a window of opportunity that might not exist in a few months, as I've said, I feel Bivol beats him. I feel Bivol would beat Kovalev. Right? If Canelo looks at Kovalev's style and says to himself, I dodged Danny Jacobs' jab. Why can't I dodge this guy's jab? Also, let's say lightning strikes. Let's say he loses the Kovalev fight. Wouldn't that be like Ray Robinson losing the Joey Maxim fight? If Canelo loses the Kovalev fight, a lot of people in boxing are going to say, well, you know, he, he really was a middleweight. Right? He was fighting out of his weight class. We'll even diminish the impact of a loss. In other words, there's less downside fighting a Kovalev legacy-wise than there is losing, let's say, a third match against Golovkin. So let's think it through. I'm very impressed by Demetrius Andre. I don't think he gets to fight Canelo. I think the Canelo people are looking at the film and they're saying, wow, this guy's a problem. People here online know I consider Golovkin to be one of the best middleweight champions in history. I don't think Canelo fights him again. Right? Fighters have very few secrets. 
after being in the ring 24 rounds with the guy. Right? Canelo might be thinking, man, that second fight was grueling. I had an element of surprise in going deep in the pocket against him, surprised him, being on my front foot. That element of surprise goes out the window for a third fight. Why do I want to risk having some people feel that I lost that trilogy by fighting him again in the third fight when we tied the first fight officially and I beat him the second fight officially? Right? Why fight Callum Smith at 168 when you have a shot at the 175 title and quite frankly if you win that fight Callum Smith likely will end up at 175 eventually. Right? Tall 6'3 guys can't stay at 168 forever. Anyway, that's how I see it. I'm expecting Canelo to pivot here. I don't think he goes back to 160. If making 160 was easy, he wouldn't have fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. at 164 pounds more than a year ago. Right? I think it's hard for Canelo to make 160. I think the public views Canelo who's thick. Right? Understand, when Canelo fights Rocky Fielding at 168 pounds, folks, he had hardly any fat on him. Right? This is a 5'8 guy who weighed 154 pounds nine years ago. Right? Nine years ago. I don't think it's a reach to say that this guy is really a super middleweight, if not a light heavyweight. I'm guessing Canelo has to cut weight to make weight. One of the secrets in boxing is, as Timothy Bradley puts it, when you have a hard cut, it hurts your punch resistance. So I know some people are going to say, is he ready to take a punch at 175? Folks, it might be easier to do so than to take a punch while you're weight drained at 160 pounds against a guy like Golovkin who's a heavy puncher. That's how I see it. Let me also say too, if Canelo goes to 175, that doesn't negate a fight against Golovkin. Understand, Golovkin and Kovalev used to both be trained by Abel Sanchez. Right? Rumor has it the guys used to spar together. I don't think Golovkin would be afraid of fighting Canelo at 175, especially if it was for the title there. Right? Understand, Golovkin himself has problems losing weight to get to 160. If he didn't, his last fight wouldn't have been at 164 pounds. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.